After you look at the scientific proof, the historical proof begins to leap out at you in completely new ways. A good example of this new context can be found with Jeremiah, a prophet from the Old Testament. He felt compelled to warn us of something he called the destroyer, and he clearly foresaw how the entire earth would suffer its wrath. In Jeremiah 25:32 and 48:8, we read. Disasters will soon spread from nation to nation. They will come like a powerful storm to all the faraway places on earth. Here, Jeremiah clearly warns us that this future cataclysm will beset us on a global scale. He goes on to say, "The destroyer will come against every town. Not one town will escape. The Lord said this will happen." Here, Jeremiah identifies the global cataclysm as being caused by something he refers to as the destroyer. So, are there any similar ancient texts from this same period of time that give us the same exact wording? Yes, there is. For this, we go back to the Exodus, which was as much a blessing for the Hebrews as it was a terrible curse for the Egyptians. In the aftermath of Exodus, the Egyptians had lost their faith. Their own pantheon of gods had proven impotent before the powers of the Hebrew God. Just as we felt compelled to understand why 9/11 caught us so unawares, the Egyptians needed to understand what happened to them as well. So, as the Hebrews began to write the Old Testament, the Egyptians simultaneously penned a massive anthology called the Great Book. The original text was written in ancient Hieratic, and was later translated into Phoenician and then on into English. In its original form, the Great Book was the size of a modern encyclopedia, and it offered very precise historical accounts. Two such notable accounts were Noah's flood, or the Deluge, as it is more commonly known across the four corners of the earth. In the Egyptian account of Susuta and Hanok. They described an ark very similar to the one built by Noah, and in much the same manner. Then there are the Egyptian accounts of the ten plagues of Exodus. It is important to keep in mind their version was written by the vanquished, as opposed to the Old Testament account, which was written by the victorious Hebrews. There are many similarities between the two. For example, neither the Hebrews nor the Egyptians. Mention the actual name of the Pharaoh of Exodus. However, where they differ, and strikingly so, is in what actually caused the ten plagues of Exodus. According to the ancient Egyptians, what caused the ten plagues of Exodus was a massive object. They also tell us this same object caused Noah's flood and the destruction of Atlantis as well. Like the Hebrew prophet Jeremiah, they too called it the Destroyer. And have warned us of its return. In fact, the ancient Egyptians go to great length to warn us that Jeremiah's destroyer will return with catastrophic consequences for all of the earth and those who live upon it. And in these days, what remains of these ancient Egyptian historical accounts are contained within the first six books of the Colburn Bible. And they corroborate similar accounts in the Hebrew Torah, or the Old Testament, as it is referred to by Christians. Scientifically accurate, these ancient Egyptian accounts read as easily as man on the street TV interviews. This is why noted Planet X historian Greg Jenner says that the Colburn Bible is the Rosetta Stone of Planet X. This is because the Egyptian accounts are so prescient. They unlock many Planet X secrets buried within the Holy Bible and numerous other ancient texts and folklore. Many of the harbinger signs of the destroyer's return mentioned within the Colburn Bible have already come to pass, 
and it is warning us that what will come will be Jeremiah's destroyer. The Colburn Bible gives us many examples of what this is going to be like, and most notable comes from the book of manuscripts. When blood drops upon the earth, the destroyer will appear, and mountains will open up and belch forth fire and ashes. Trees will be destroyed, and all living things engulfed. Waters will be swallowed up by the land, and seas will boil. Assuming our governments know all this, what are they doing about it? And of course, we want to know what's going to happen to us. Well, our governments have known about it for a long time, and yes, they're doing plenty about it. The question is, what are you doing about it? 